At this point, we've learned the formula that creates the major scale, along with the idea that we can take that same formula and build major scales from any desired tonic. So now we're gonna talk about key signatures. The term key refers to the primary scale being used. For example, if a song is based on a D major scale, that means we are in the key of D major. Or if somebody tells you that this song only uses notes from the A major scale, that means that that song is in the key of A major. Key signatures will contain anywhere from zero to seven sharps or flats. So far, we've built these scales by adding the sharps or flats necessary to create the desired pattern of whole and half steps that makes the major scale, as shown here. Something you may have seen before are these accidentals being grouped at the beginning of the staff, which is your key signature, and that tells you which notes in the measure to be altered to create the desired scale. So sharps always appear in the key signature in the same order. It's important to memorize this order. A lot of people use different acronyms like we did with memorizing the lines and spaces on the staff. And I'll tell you, the one that I used for this is fat cats go down alleys eating bugs. I shit you not, I learned that formula when I was in high school and it stuck. So really, if you find a good acronym that makes you laugh and, you can, and it helps you to, to memorize this order of sharps, just go with it. So to identify a major key that contains sharps, the first thing is to look at the last sharp in the sequence. In this example, it's an A sharp. The last sharp in any key signature corresponds with the seventh scale degree of the given key. Therefore, the next line or space above that sharp is the tonic of said key. In this example, A sharp is the last sharp in the sequence. So the next note above that is B natural, which is indeed the tonic of the key of B major. So next, if we look at a B major scale, we see that it does contain five sharps and that A sharp is indeed the seventh scale degree of the key. There are two basic steps that we use in order to write out a key signature that contains sharps. The first step is to figure out what the last sharp in the sequence will be. To do this, all we have to do is go a half step below the desired tonic note. If we're looking at the key of A, a half step below A is G sharp. Next, we go through and add the sharps in order up until and including the last sharp, which in this case is G sharp. Now we know that the key of A has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. And here they are in both the treble and the bass clef. Let's look at the flats. Similar to the sharps, flats always appear in the key signature in the same order, which is shown here. The acronym I've never forgotten since I was young is BEAD. Not really an acronym, but it, the first four letters spell BEAD and the acronym Good Clean Fun. I don't know why that stuck, but it just did. Never forgot it. You might have noticed that the order of flats is the exact same as the order of sharps, but flipped around. To identify the key of a signature containing flats, we, we begin by looking at the last flat in the series. In this example is D flat. That last flat corresponds with the fourth degree of whatever scale we're in. So to find the tonic, we simply count down four note names from that last flat. D flat, E flat, B flat, and A flat. So four, four note names down from D flat is A flat. So now we know that the key of A flat has four flats. Another way to figure out the signature of a key containing flats is to look at the second to last flat in the series. 
So you can see in the key of A flat, the second to last flat is indeed an A flat, which puts us in that key. So just like the sharps, there are two steps that we use in order to write out a key containing flats. First, we go through the order of flats until we reach our desired tonic note. Let's do the key of E flat. The second step is to add one more flat in the series. Remembering that the second to last flat tells you the tonic of that key signature. So now we know that the key of E flat has three flats in it. Let's try this again, looking at the key of C flat. If we go through the order of flats until we reach our desired tonic note, we get to C flat. Then we add one more flat in the series, which is F flat. Now we know that the key of C flat has seven flats. And here it is in both treble and bass clef. And again, we see that C flat is indeed the second to last flat in the series. This table will show the standard placement of sharps and flats on the staff in both bass and treble clef.